My name is Danger Death. Care for that? Let's go on an adventure. On our adventure today, we're going to be talking about two different things, very important things inside ecosystems. That would be food chains and food webs. Now, when we talk about those food chains and food webs, we want to... Now, you might be thinking, why do we need to eat? Well, that's the question I want to ask you. And I want you to really think about it. You see, I'm not talking about uh, myself getting a extra large donair pizza and getting real greasy with it, you know, danger death cover, like getting greasy with a nice big pizza. No, I'm talking about survival. Right. Why do that animals and plants need food for survival? Think about it for a moment. All right, thinking's over. The reason why we need food, and plants need food, is for energy. You see, all of these living things, including ourselves, we require that energy to survive. If we don't have energy, then we're not going to be able to grow. We're not going to be able to move around. We're not going to be able to survive. Think about the last time you were hungry. What did you... Do you really want to do anything else other than eat or maybe sit on the, the couch and watch the telly? <laughs> I don't think so. No. <clears throat> now, it's quite obvious how animals survive and get their food. I mean, there's usually hunting or some sort of gathering or... Um, hey, for human beings, I guess it's as simple as going to a grocery store. Not for Danger Death Curve, then I get my own food. Thank you very much. But for animals, they tend to hunt and get the food in the outside nature. Plants, however, they can't just get food. They produce their own food. They're different from animals in that way. You see, they go through something called photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis is essentially plants taking in all of this beautiful sunlight and the, ah, you know, wonderful rain from the soil and nutrients, right? Taking that in, plus the carbon dioxide, mixing that all up, mixing that all up wonderfully, using that co combination and creating food for themselves, as well as oxygen waste, they just then release out into the environment for us to breathe in. <sighs> Thank you there, my little friend. When I think about animals, I'm thinking about the animal kingdom and others, herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. When I usually think about carnivores, I think about my dinosaur friend and like, Rufus over here. Oh, the danger of Govillet. <laughs> Good fun, isn't it? Um, but I also think of those herbivores. Herbivores being those animals who eat plants, right? Omnivores, they're a special breed, aren't they? Yeah, they're kind of like you and me, human beings, if you will, tending to eat both plants and animals, be it eating plant and meat, okay? What might that look like in the dinosaur realm? Well, well, looks like you've got your dinosaur friend here, Rufus. I'm Rufus. I'm a carnivore. I eat meat. Ah. And then you've got your little herbivore here. Hi, oh, I'm a herbivore. I like to eat plants. Mmm, that's the grassiest grass I've eaten of the grass. Well, the carnivore, they're gonna eat the herbivore. Oh, hello there. And then the omnivore, well, they're just gonna eat both. Mm. Sorry, Rufus, tasted so good. In our ecosystems, the terms that we now use are producers, consumers, and decomposers. This is what that could look like. Right here at the ground level, what you have are producers. Those are your plants, right? These plants and grasses, those are your producers. Over here, you have your primary consumers. These consumers consume the producers, meaning they're herbivores. They eat the plants and the grasses. Those could be things like rabbits, deer, etc.
over here is where we have our secondary consumers. These organisms can eat the primary consumers as well as the producers, effectively making them omnivores. Some examples are cats, snakes, owls, and seals. At the top, we have the tertiary consumers. These organisms can eat any of the consumers, meaning that they are simply carnivorous creatures. Now, they may at times be omnivores like the bear. However, these tend to be the apex predators, meaning that all they do is eat meat with no predators above them. The last type of organisms are the decomposers. Now, decomposers can be found at every level of a food chain, meaning they're found at the producer level, primary consumer level, secondary consumer level, and the tertiary consumer level. Essentially what they do is they break down the dead material of these plants and animals. Now, what can do that? Simple things like fungi, bacteria, insects. And what they do is they break down the tissue until it's broken down to its nutrients, things that are good for the soil to grow new, lively things. But what exactly are food chains and food webs? Food chains and food webs are basically diagrams in our ecosystems that show us which organisms are consumed by what other organisms and how that energy transfers over from the producer to the primary consumer, to the secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and potentially the apex predator. Now, all of these creatures, they exist in that same ecosystem. And if you take one out of them, one out of that ecosystem, the whole food chain gets disrupted, right? If you take away that producer, None of those other organisms are going to be able to feast or survive. Food webs are a little bit different than food chains in that they're more complex. There's a lot more than just one type of grass, usually one type of primary consumer, secondary consumer, and tertiary consumer in an ecosystem. However, a food web shows us that maybe there's different types of flowers and grasses, as well as different types of maybe rabbits, deer, different herbivores. Um, food webs are just complex food chains all the food chains in one ecosystem combined together into one food web. All right, well, hope you had fun. This is Danger Dev Kovalet signing. Oh, no. Vengeful offspring.